to church every morning and ran around the wall seven times. Uh, we were all in the hospital and 
And before my father took his last breath, we were waiting on my husband to come. We were in Woodbridge. And my husband was making his way, getting to the hospital. And when he got in that hospital, now we know our father was already pronounced dead. But you know how they take that last breath? When Pastor Chapman walked in and put his hand on my father's head, he took his last breath. And so I thank God for this true man of God who's going to deliver the word of God. I always say, put your seatbelt on. That's what they do when you're on the airplane. They say, put your seatbelt on. But when you get in a certain altitude, you can take the seatbelt off and begin to walk around. So we're going somewhere tonight in a more excellent way in God. Amen. I would like to introduce to you, present to others, no other than no other one than this great man of God. And I also want to honor our general overseer, Mother Benson, and her. Amen. 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 Thank God for her. Amen. Put your hands together for Bishop T. Tyrone Champion. But before we come, we're going to have a selection from the Bishop Choir. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I just wonder, I have a question, amen. How many of us can praise the Lord without a cheerleader? You can, you can pray. But it seems like we always have to have a cheerleader to get us to magnify God. Is there someone in the house that don't need no one to pump him up that can praise him right now?
ask and call for him to come. Ask for him to come. It will have to be a, a pom-pom session. Just got to ask him and walk him and seek him and be hungry for him. Hallelujah. We think that the loud noise makes him come. But it's the heart condition. It, oh, I don't know y'all heard that. It's the hungry spirit that wants God's presence to be in. It's not how loud we yell or how loud the organ is. Or the, the, but it's, it's my soul crying out for the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We give our to God tonight. In my life. Amen. Thank God for his mercy and his grace. Amen. We want to give, amen, a commendation, praise the Lord, a congratulations to my general bishop, Bishop Alvin D. Dixon. God bless you, Lord of God. Amen. And Cole Pastor Dixon, amen. For 18 years of ministry, amen. Oh, come on, y'all clap your hands, amen. 18 years, 18 years of ministry. We thank you, amen, that my wife so said so eloquently, man, this consistency and stability, amen. And I like the fact, praise the Lord, uh, that he is just who he is. He don't try to be nobody else but himself. <laughs> And in himself, he's effective. Yes. So we thank God for your presence get on tonight. Like this. Thank God for Mother Vincent. Amen. Ready. 48 years. Amen. Good Apostle Vincent. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we appreciate her. She's not here. Amen. She's with family. We thank God. Keep her in prayer. And amen. We want to thank God for my lovely, my beautiful, my spectacular, my fine looking. My Holy Ghost field and fire that time. My speaking in tongue. Prayer warrior wife. The most reverend. The highly esteemed. My beautiful lover and companion. Bishop didn't know what he was doing in the office, but he confirmed 
uh, what the Lord had given me to share with you tonight. Amen. About taking uh, the excellence challenge. Dealing with the theme, I was just praying, of course, and asking God what to say to you tonight. Amen. And uh, I love the shouting. I, I'm a dancer. I love to dance with my one foot and praise and magnify God. Uh, but you know, I, I just, I want some deeper things of God. Amen. I want the things that have substance that I can shout on in the inside. Y'all hear me? Amen. And the outside, praise the Lord, don't have to shout. But the inside is rejoicing. Over yes. the depth of what God to is God. placing in my spirit. They wonder what I'm talking about. Glory amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. amen. That's why, praise the Lord, uh, you can be an older saint or it can be young, it does not matter. And someone can be running around, jump. That's what I, I'm good, I'm down, I do that too. But you can rejoice in the inside, knowing the word you heard gave you life. Yes. Amen. Yes. Your chair. I want some life changing word. Amen. 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 I want something that's going to turn my world upside down. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't want something that's going to make me feel good for the moment. I want something that's going to be a permanent transition within my life. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. In the book of Corinthians, the 12th chapter, praise the Lord. Amen. Let's stand real quickly. I'm sorry. 12th chapter. Amen. 28 verse. Corinthians 12, 28. We just don't go nowhere. West. Get right there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 12, 28. You read the 31. You have it. Please stand with me real quickly. Amen. Uh, and God had sent 1 Corinthians 12 chapter 28 to the 31st verse. And he said, God had sent some, sent some in the church, first apostles, secondly, secondary prophets, thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? are all workers of miracles having all the gifts of healing uh, have all to do all speak with tongues do all interpret but covet earnestly the best gift and yet show I unto you a more excellent way let me have you see in the house of the Lord God bless you tonight. Thank you for coming out tonight amen there is something going on that started in the summer of 2014 praise the Lord and some of you know about it, some of you may have already did. It's called the ALS Challenge. Amen. And that's when it's imophic, myotrophic, amen. Let me get this right. Lateral sclerosis is a disease that affects, that affects the brain and the spine where the muscles you lose their, their uh, continuity to see to even move. Amen. So a gentleman had the idea of taking some ice water, amen, and pouring it over a friend of his to dare to do it. That was a challenge. Amen. And if you did that, praise the Lord, amen, then you would be able to say, hey, I, I dare to do it. It's a challenge. Amen. But in giving, in doing that, after I did that to you, put water on you, you give money to the ALS Foundation. Amen. To help those that have this disease. Tonight's message is designed to challenge you. Amen. It is a spiritual, amen, word to challenge our spiritual minds, amen, and souls in areas that God has given me tonight. Amen. I think we as a church, we become too lackadaisical, become neutral. We, we, we have these sugar high fixes, amen, where if we don't shout, we didn't have church. If we didn't dance, we didn't have church. If nobody yelled, we didn't have church. So we get this sugar high fix, amen. If he didn't preach about money, a car, or healing, we didn't have church. And that's my issue. Amen. And so we then become sugar babies. Amen. Become sugar babies. Praise the Lord. If I don't hit that tune or tune up today, amen, and I didn't take it to a higher level with the organ, he really just talked and talked and teach me. So he just taught and taught a little bit. Amen. Amen. We are sugar babies. Amen. So I come tonight, amen, to challenge your spirituality in these areas to recognize that you've got to get up and do more than what you are doing right now in your life. Amen. Amen. You, you have to initiate, 
You have to take a challenge. You have to accept and say, you know what, in my life right now, God is requiring more from me than what I'm giving him. Amen. And that challenge, I'm going to be like the man with the ice bucket. I'm going to say, Lord, pour it on me. I'm going to take it, however it comes, amen, because I'm accepting what you're giving to me to be your servant in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I came tonight to challenge you. Take this excellent challenge. Notice the word of God. It, it constantly pushes up, pushes us to do greater things. It never keeps us in the same stagnant position. Yeah. Amen. When we think we've reached the pinnacle of spiritual or natural growth, of money we've obtained, God is always more for you to do. Heck and amen. amen. There's always a better way. Amen. The problem arises when we stop challenging ourselves to grow spiritually and naturally. Amen. I spoke this morning to Joe. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, NGU, is, which is what? NGU is what, church? Never give up. Never give up. Amen. That no matter where you are in your life, you never give up. You never take down. Amen. Job did not take down. We become stagnant in our areas of our life and become complacent. And we always want the preacher, the apostle, the prophet to give me a word. Amen. To lay hands on me. Get your own word. Amen. Lay hands on your own self. So y'all y'all like that stuff, huh? We want the man that got to fly in from New York. Amen. They don't fly suit on. I know he can preach. Amen. And talk real good. And put it. But you got the power in you. You have an anointing in you. Where you can be sick or go through hell in your own life and put hands on your own self. And you get up all by yourself. Amen. We arise, we, uh, when the thirst, when the thirst of God becomes disabled, not compliable to the pushing and unction of the Holy Ghost, we become dangerous to our own selves. In other words, when we don't begin to move in God's will, amen, to challenge us, we become a threat to our own self. We become a danger to our own, when you stop growing, when you stop functioning, when you stop to operate in your gift and your calling, you now hurt your own spirituality. No, you don't see it. You know why? Because you just come to church. You sit. You don't want to see what's happening on the inside. They think you're all right, but inside you're dying. Inside you're shriveling up. You go to work. You work hard. You try and pray. You try and fast, but you know, you know, in your heart of heart, you ain't you how you used to be. That's a that's an amen right there. You know how you used to fast and pray and seek up. You know where you were, and then you were on point with God, and now we're just passing through, passing time. But you know what God placed in you. You know the power that lies within you, praise the Lord. I come to challenge that ability tonight. Amen. Paul said Galatians, for if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. We have a lot of transgressors in the church who don't realize they're transgressors. Yeah, I can't say that one more time. Amen. We have a lot of transgressors in the church who don't realize they're transgressors. Well, why, what do you mean, Bishop? Mean, I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't club. I, I, I don't, you know, hormone. I don't fornicate. I don't, I don't do all those things that I know I should not supposed to do. But the, what is it that God told you to do that you're not doing?
than to kill. It costs too much. The hurt is too deep. It costs to give up. It costs to let go. So I'm going to say to myself, self, I'm going to do A, B, and C. Why you going to touch D? Because D is going to make me humble myself. D is going to make me get up something I don't want to give up. D is going to make me embarrass myself. D is going to make me give all I got. I don't want to give it up yet. I come to challenge that D in your life. I bind that demon in the name of Jesus. I speak to that thing that it will come out. You will get set free. You will give it to God. You will release yourself tonight in the name of Jesus. You will not hold that thing back. Hide that thing. I, 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 I call to your attic of your life. I go to your basement of your life. I call that deep dark stuff out of the basement of you. Get up! Get out of there! I've been hiding there too long. Say, neighbor, are you going to take the excellent challenge? Very subtle ways. It's up to us to accept the challenge and to find the more excellent way. Some man asks, what do you mean God is challenging? Well, God is challenging you, first of all, amen, in your ministry, in your walk with him, in your calling, amen. Are you fulfilling all the God called you to do in your walk with him now? In your ministry, this ain't, this ain't, no, no, this ain't for the preachers. It's for us too now. Listen, every, everybody in this church got a calling. If the church is not functioning in area A, and the gift of you is in area A. Why aren't you in that area? Yes. Come on now. If you know that's your gifting, and you sit there, and we're going to say the church show is dying in area A. Oh, y'all oh, got you. And you gossiping about area A, and say how jacked up it is, and how messed up it is, but you bring your nasty behind here every Sunday, and you know your gift is in area A. What is wrong with you? Can I just be raw? I feel a little raw tonight, amen, is that alright? I feel a little raw tonight, get raw, I say some bad words, but you ain't gonna like too well, amen? So I might call you nasty because when you're nasty, when you sin, you're nasty. When you disobey, you sin, and sin is nasty. Oh, can I make that, isn't that, isn't that right? Didn't the word say that it's a stick to his nostril? And so I'm not, I'm not cursing at all, I don't curse, amen? But if I'm not doing God's wound area, hey, that means I'm disobeying God. It means I'm sinning. That means I stink. So we got these folks that come into the church and they like that boy on Charlie Brown. Pig, pig. And they walk in and all that dust and stuff is all behind the brother. Now he, he don't see the dust. He's been there so long, it's natural. But this thing is so real. I'm laughing too, amen. But it's so real. Because that's the church folk. That's us. We're not operating in our gifting, in our ministry. Oh, you know what? I love, oh, I love being called Bishop, a Bishop Champion, Pastor Champion, Brother Chico, I love all, that's who I am. Hey, Brother Champion, Brother Tommy, Brother Tyrone, that's all who I am. But I want to be called God's servant. I want to be, I want someone to say, that, that's a man of God right there. The titles mean nothing. We got apostles. Apostle what? Can't spell apostle. We got bishops. Bishop of what? You can't spell bishop. So title nowadays has little value. Carries little, oh y'all, hey man. Has little substance. There's very few men now that carry the true mantle of the apostle. Ah. the title, amen. Apostle in Greek means sit. That means you switch somewhere and you built a ministry. That's right. You move from there and there and you built a ministry.
ministry. You know what it means? You mean, it means you built something from nothing. That's the apostle. That's the gift. So yeah. yeah. we got titles of people that mean nothing. Nothing. It's a title. They act like it's a job promotion. It's a job. You were first a co worker. Then you became a coordinator. Then you went to supervisor. Then you went to manager. Same way in church. I know I'm talking about friends like that. I'm getting promoted. Bishop, where you going? I'm a pastor. Brother, you ain't got, you got, you got 10 members of the church. I'm not hung up on that, right? But I'm just saying. You apostle, you got 10 members, you ain't doing nothing. That means, come on, y'all. You got to build something. If you're a prophet, don't let your words hit the ground. Amen, light. Prophet, he, he said one word, and that was me. That's called the word of knowledge. Come on, I can't teach this morning tonight, amen. Tell me my future. They come to pass. Huh? Please don't tell me stuff. You got a title? You a teacher? The Dasco in Greek. You can instruct. But you can't even quote the first ten books of the Bible. Where's your calling? I'm challenging your calling tonight. I'm challenging your purpose tonight. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. It's okay to be a first lady. Don't be a raggedy one. We shout next to my preacher. I'm not playing tonight. Amen. I told the Lord what I want to do. He honored my prayer. And I come for business tonight. I come to challenge someone tonight. See, the, the issue is the past. We too, we too soft with y'all. We don't want to lose membership. Or hurt no, and then we get soft members that can't take nothing. They can't handle nothing. Why? We give them too much baby food. Give that Negro some meat. I'm sorry. 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 I'm
and challenge you. Stop talking about it and be like Nike and just do it. Stop talking. Get up and do it. If you're a prayer warrior, be on your post. Don't let mother call you, bishop call you, and say, where are you at? You are called to pray. Souls will die because you're not there. Oh, y'all don't believe that, do you? I know. I, I'm serious about that. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. I was praying in my house in Alaska. Amen. Years ago, praise the Lord. I was only a young elder in Church of God Christ. Amen. And the brother, uh, the Lord told me in, in my prayer time, in my prayer time, the Spirit of the Lord said, he said, find the spirit of suicide. He said, find it right now. Find it right now. I, I, I'm only 27 years old. And I'm praying, Lord, I, I hear I'm obeying you. Uh, and I find that thing on my way to my job. I had on the Christian radio, woman came on and said, she said, I called in because I was just getting ready to kill myself. And something said, don't do it. God had let me hear he was real. So we, because you can't see it, or you can't touch it, it's still real. Oh yeah, it, it's still real. So when God said, get up and pray for John, get up and pray for John. Because the blood can be on your hands. Oh, y'all can't handle that, can you? That's for the pastor. That's for the bishop. No, if he told you, it can. Oh, y'all, y'all can't. That's too deep for y'all. It can be on your hand, Bob. Be on your hand, brother. But tell you, if God said do it, that's your challenge. God said pray, pray. God said fast, fast. Get your word, get your word. In my church, we're doing a Bible challenge right now. Amen. The Lord told me last week. He said the church, your church. Don't read enough word. Amen. Don't read enough word for So we just read the scripture today and get all happy about it. Oh, God gave me. Amen. So we're going to read the whole book of Acts in seven days. So we did. So the whole, we did the whole book of Acts. Amen. I'm not reading to get exegete and to get Greek. I want you to read volume to get word in ten. So God told me. Amen. I said, we did Acts. Everybody was excited. Oh, my God. I knew I was in that. The next week, I said, okay, we do Ephesians. The whole book of Ephesians, one week read. Amen. Got to Ephesians, and the whole book in one week came back to Wednesday Bible study. The church was extremely all there. We were going crazy. We were going crazy, weren't we? We were going crazy. People were saying, I didn't know that was in there. I didn't know I had that power in me. I didn't know who I was in God. I didn't know what my capacity, my destiny, my calling was. I'm living off one scripture a day or bishop to preach, but I give for myself. Amen, amen. Your call is tied in to your spiritual intake. What you eat is who you are. God is challenging your spiritual growth. Your spiritual growth. For some, amen, for some say, like, I'm fine. I'm doing good. Hebrews says this, 5 and 12 and 14. For with the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Why is it we always babying the older church folk? I know that I know I'm not privileged to teach you too much. Why is it we got the most issues with the older church folk? The most attitudes with the seasoned saints. The ones that quit. Well, because it ain't going their way. The sanctified. Been saved a long time. Well, the word just said, really, you can't even teach. You have the that someone teach you. You got you you got to understand that when you become skilled in God's word, there is a requirement of you that's above the baby Christian. That means you can take more stuff. You can handle more rebuke. Oh y'all, amen. Can I can tell you that in a natural realm, amen. And some of y'all are there now. Some of y'all been there. But in the in the secular world, in the business world. When you become SVP and VP, and you become when you're making a hundred, you know, six figures, praise the Lord, Amen, Amen. I've been there before. They don't cut no corners. They don't baby you about your job. They tell you, fix it or you fire. Change it or I get someone else. But in 
the church world, we're too afraid to hurt somebody's feelings. Amen. Amen. There's a growth that's not taking place in the church. Ah, souls are dying because of our immaturity. We're consumed with our money and our car and our job. Where is your calling? Where is your maturity? Where is your growth in God? Where is your stability? Why is the over 24 so unstable? So up one day, down the way. Oh my God. And you've been saying 20 years and I can't rebuke you? I can't rebuke you. You've been with me 20 years. I tell you, don't do that. And you quit the church. You leave your post.
Yeah, we come in. <laughs> we ain't right, y'all. We come in like we on top. No respect for God. Yes, oh yeah, we do. Oh, no, 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 you don't. Amen. Well, you do not. You do not. If you read Old Testament, the New Testament, you'll see that God always gave specific instructions. Yes, He did. Amen. Amen. And when they didn't follow those instructions, they were either killed or they lost their blessing. And so, what we do with now, Bishop? We're operating on this thing called grace. We yeah. that grace don't keep records. It could be the people, but grace keeps records. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you want to hear that, did you? Yeah. So you think you're not your mind, grace don't break this watch. Grace keeps records. Grace, amen, has a tally of when we did X, Y, Z. Yeah. Only by repenting is it washed away. So if I come late all the time, and think it's all right. God is still saying she ain't set free yet. He ain't delivered yet. Yeah. Amen. He's still doing the same thing he did way back in the day. Well, Amen. Let me hear it. What time? What time? Get ready out of here. What time is it? What time? I gotta hurry up. Mm -hmm. uh, we know too bad tonight. We're gonna be go home and get some, some Advil tonight. Amen. <laughs> but I gotta keep the Lord in. Amen. Amen. Paul said Philippians 1 and 9 10, and it is my prayer that your love may abound in more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. He said, I want you to abound more and more in knowledge and in excellency. Amen. Are we abounding? Are we growing? Amen. In excellency. George Barnum, amen, a Christian analyst says this. He says, amen, that the biggest issue now with the church is called social media. Amen. Social media is a killer to the church. One third of adults right now, if your text went off while I'm preaching, one third of you would stop and check your text. That's a true stat right here. True stat. Research it out. What? One third of you. The word's going forth. Change it up. Your text went off. You got, or you got a little buzz. Amen. You go like this. You know what we're doing? Pew. Yeah. <laughs> this is your turn. I see it all. Some of y'all did, did that just a few years ago, right? Probably. You go like this. One third. One third. It says one quarter of the people, amen, don't give God time at all during the day. Wow. So in this church right now, a hundred people probably in this room, pretty five of y'all don't give God time in the whole day. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like, no, that ain't true, but get up. You get up, you rush, you hop in your car, you fly to work, you forget about them. Mm -hmm. One quarter. My last point, and I'm almost done. My last point. Amen. God is challenging you to a more excellent way. In the text tonight, amen, Paul emphasizes the working power of words of wisdom, of knowledge, of gifts of healing, of miracle, of prophecy. To another, the learning of gifts, of spirits, and, uh, uh, and diverse types of tongues. Excuse me. Amen. Stop right there. If I had all those gifts, I would say, you know what? I'm good. But Paul, he goes to the next level and says, hold up. If you got all those gifts, mm -hmm. I'm still going to show you an excellent way. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. If you, got, you can speak in tongues. You can prophesy. You got miracles. But that still does not amount to what's more excellent to God. And so this is what God showed me amen, in this text. Excellence, we think in our mind, amen, is that I do something at a high level. <coughs> but to God, it is not so. Right. To God, it's obeying the divine will of the Father. Yes, that makes you excellent. Yes, amen. The woman with the might, amen, and the rich man, 
to give a whole bunch of money. She gave two mics. But Christ said she's excellent. She gave out of her heart, not her abundance. So when you give excellently, amen, to God, you're giving something from your heart that he wants just from you. Jesus. Uh, now that, that's good word, but tell you why it's good word. Because we say, I come to work, I come to prayer every, every Tuesday. I, I fast and pray, I do all that. That's all good and wonderful. I said earlier, what is God asking from you that you have not given him yet? That one thing he's asking from you is what makes you excellent. That thing he's pushing or keep prying or reminding you of, that is what God calls excellent. And God says, Mary, stop worrying. Let's use your name, go on. Amen. He says, stop worrying. And that, I'm so focused on me being on time, me coming to church, me doing all those good things I do, and I still carry worry in my heart that God says you're not excellent. Uh -huh. When you get me worried, when you become excellent. Uh -huh. uh, when you give me what I desire, yes. what I want, amen. That's why I'm challenging, I'm challenging you tonight. I, I, I don't care about shouting. I'm challenging you tonight. I want you to examine yourself and ask yourself, am I excellent in the area that God is asking of me? Am I perfected? Am I mature in that one spot? I know I'm weak in. Amen. And have I arrived yet? Am I there? If it's my mouth, am, am, am I too? Am I, do I speak too harshly? Amen. Do I, do I talk too quickly? Do, am I got a rude spirit? Amen. Do I judge folks too? That, God said, I challenge you tonight. Amen. Take that excellent challenge. Huh? This week, challenge yourself in the areas that you lack. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Here's the devil. He blinds you. But all you do good. Yeah. Brother Smith, my God, you shout. Oh, Lord. You are shouting the shit. And you're so clean all the time. <laughs> tonight, you're the first brother I ever seen in church to wear a tuxedo in the church. <laughs> you sharp, you sharp. You sharp, brother. And you look good. Yeah. You yeah. can tell all the time. <laughs> and you say too. <laughs> So the devil will tell you all that you do good. Yeah, Notice yeah. that. He'll never expose what you are not doing away. Uh -huh. Never. He'll never say, the Smith, this is a dark area, you're not dealing with it. Just, he'll never tell you that. He'll always accent, amen, what you do good. Even your friends will say, girl, you son, yes, you all right with me. And he'll never say, you know what? You can stop, you will not be a little son. You quit that man. I don't care what you got on your head. Stop it. <laughs> well, that sound rough, don't it? That sound rough, amen? Amen? That sound rough. I love you, co pastor. Amen? I'm talking about you now. <laughs> Who will accept the challenge? Who, who seriously? Let's set the challenge. Who, who will say, I'm going to go home and throw my bottles of alcohol away? I'm going to go home and I'm going to stop doing drugs. I'm going to go home and we'll change my phone so we can't call me no more. I'm going to go home and stop worrying about this situation. I'm challenging you tonight. I'm challenging you to excellence. I'm challenging you to a higher calling in God. I'm not just going to be a first, I'm going to be an anointed first lady. I'm going to be an anointed deacon of God. I want to walk and people get healed in my shadow. Amen. Amen. I just don't want to be a church member that counts money. I want to be anointed count. Uh, I don't want to say I want to be anointed. Who, who's going to accept the challenge? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I didn't come tonight. For your problems. I'll pray for those two in a few minutes. But the spirit of my assignment tonight is to wake you up. That's my assignment tonight. This is the anniversary. And we're going somewhere with God. A more excellent way. And we can't go that way if you're not excellent. We can't go that way 
if we're haphazard, if we're, if we're lack, no, we, we're not going to be. Uh -uh. And what happens when you're not when you're not like that? You hold the ministry hostage. If you are that individual, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, that accepts the challenge tonight. Lord God, the first thing I want you to do is repent. Not the first thing. Repent. Lord, forgive me for not perfecting this area in my life. Lord, forgive me for not. I, I call some of y'all names out. I mean, I'm just nothing personal. Nothing for, please don't be offended by that. I mean, I mean no harm. I mean, I mean no harm. But the first thing is repentance. Amen. And Lord, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Lord, forgive me. I, I repent and I turn away from that old man. You keep saying for your eyes. Raise your hands up to him. in our lives. Because all I said tonight, I'm sure the devil gave you an excuse of why you do what you do. But Jesus nailed all the excuses on the cross. So if you want to go to that next level, just step in the aisle tonight. I'm gonna pray tonight. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna pray for those that want excellence. I'm gonna pray for those that, that lack in areas that they need God to come in. No more playing church. No more playing church. No more playing church. No more. No more. Not a TDC. Not under the mission, out of the events, no more, no more, no more, no more, no more. I'm calling excellence. God's calling excellence. God's calling excellence. God's calling excellence. 